Uh, <clears throat> thank you for giving me the opportunity to conduct research as a SAF fellow. It is a great honor for me to be able to present my findings from your great archive and share my experience with you here today. For many years, I have produced works and an artist, and at the same time, have examined art as a researcher and a critic. Also, I have been working in various areas. There was a common underlining experience that I always encountered as an artist. What I have found is that the experience an artist goes through when producing an art work is not necessarily <coughs> grounded in difference of perception. That is to say, difference between visual, auditory, or tactile phenomenon. For example, the audience can see figures of dancers in motion. <clears throat> However, the dancers themselves can never see their own performance as a fall. Dancers do have a grasp of the image of their own dancing, of course, but they see this image without resorting to their eyes. Similarly, the experience of painters also doesn't solely consist of directly looking at what they are uh, painting. The painters <coughs> see even when they are not actually seeing. I don't mean the painters do not see at all. I mean that painters not only see with their eyes. This is, strong, <clears throat> this is strongly realized when dancers or painters try to instruct others how to dance or paint. To convey how to dance or paint is equivalent to communicating their internal experience to others. Could this internal experience be called truly a subjective experience? Is there any possibility to that the <clears throat> process as something objective? My conclusion will be that this internal experience is, in fact, what is objective. <coughs> my con my con <coughs> and in comparison, uh, the experience of perceiving only the external appearance of things as uh, when the audience appreciates dance or painting is more subjective or ambiguous. It is clear that what is <clears throat> taking place inside an object generate phenomena, as well as the attempt to grasp the process is more object-oriented, so to speak. <clears throat> From 2006 to 2008, I had the privilege to collaborate with Trisha Blum, who, as well as being a dancer, is an <clears throat> outstanding drawing artist. She began drawing as a choreographic method to convey internal grasped dance movement to her dancers. We could therefore say that her drawings are a direct notation of her dance. When I was asked to make a stage set, I decided to record the process of her drawing and reproduce it on stage using two simple 10 feet balls <coughs> Were columns, they seem like a part of architecture when they are still, and once they move together, they remind one of human legs. Since these poles are repli <coughs> replicating recorded movement of pen uh, that Trisha drew with, she was thus able to dance with the movement of her own drawing in the past, to dance with her own movement in the past. She danced with herself in the past.
In recent Japan, engineers are eager to develop robots which closely imitate the outward appearance of human beings. Contrary to the trend, our robots didn't resemble human appearance at all. Human can feel the presence of a person without resorting to appearance. Through the subtle gestures of objects, the vibration of water in a glass, or a squeak of a door. Because of this, I called them poltergeist type robots. Even if something looks like a mere broom or a chair, one can sense the object as being a person. <clears throat> we tend to consider the observation of exterior phenomena as objective. Therefore, it seems impossible to regard objects themselves as being capable of thinking or feeling. <clears throat> This was actually the reason why we humans couldn't objectively describe or prove the working of our own mind or consciousness. Despite what we will and think as internal experience, this is the very reason many people have discriminated animals as not having mind and consciousness. However, we artists know that what takes place and it experienced when making art is a living process whereby our own bodies act physically and feel as materials, which then becomes transmitted to other materials. This is a condition of so-called modernism art, to develop artworks by following the necessity of the media. The idea generates itself from within the media. Therefore, <coughs> Things as a medium have the ability to memorize these live process and to reproduce them. Things as medium can think as well as reproduce thought. Things think. However, their thoughts can only be experienced as an internal generated process. So, here, <coughs> with the device we came up with, this machine enabled the participants to directly experience the internal sensation which the artist felt in his drawing process. Instead of artist drawing, this machine makes the participants draw. What is moving is a board itself as a medium. Despite not moving their hand, the part participants can feel they, that they are actually drawing. For instance, when his device replays the drawing process of Matisse. <clears throat> the participant can feel what Matisse was feeling. At this moment, it becomes impossible for the participants to distinguish the agent of drawing between whether Matisse or the machine or the participant himself. In deliberately, after developing poltergeist type robot, we found ourselves making a table turning robot. <coughs> we call it missed contact. What is the potential for this robot? <coughs> uh, of course, it is to assemble archives of handwriting and drawing, the record of movement made in production, process of painters, poets, musicians, and dancers, and enable their reproduction at any given moment. In other words, one goal becomes to create an archive of how to get to the knack. Miscontact enabled the indefinite reproduction of a vivid production process of artists from the past. <clears throat> Archives consist of collected objects, 
and uh, therefore nothing but dead stock object by themselves. That is why they have been indexed, tagged, and classified according to people's necessity. But in this condition, archives like pri prison with the materials as its prisoners. And history is narrated by selecting objects from these archives according to the particular plot, history given an art <coughs> arbitrary disposition to object. However, today we are able to search without resorting to time. We can search literally anything, objects that are not installed in a sto single storage, or that are scattered around the city are also searchable. And these objects need not to be classified in advance regardless of index. Machine can discover unforeseen relations among broad and numerous data on their own. <clears throat> this is what they call machine learning, which enables deep learning. In principle, all the material in the world can be seen on its archives. Objects are now able to generate different networks and alternative plot by themselves without following the given narrative of history. Well, when we try to see culture conventionally as historical development, many discontinuous singular points inevitably appear. A great current suddenly turns up. It is often possible to recognize these currents in relation to new media or produ production methods. However, in many cases, we realize that the cause for the occurrence of these sudden developments lies in the creation of a new source of information. <clears throat> Portals for new knowledge and information to follow in. And in many cases, these portals were living human beings who provide vast amount of new information and stimulate people. A per person as a source of information, a living archive, so to speak, this <coughs> person provides new visions to his surrounding and point towards, towards brand new direction of work. However, since the amount of information he possesses, says it is enormous and the flow of knowledge unidirectional. Once this <coughs> person is gone, it becomes impossible to comprehend his work uh, or the context he relied upon. In the same way, that in the archive cannot be understood it in itself. His work cannot be contained in history and become incomprehensible and invisible as if it were a black box. Such discontinuous point can be observed in all kinds of history, even when we examine the so-called Japanese art history of modern age. It goes without saying that cultural history uh, is not divided by nation and ethnicity, nor it is it deployed linearly. The seeming Seeming linearity derives from the disposition of the history created to preserve the consistency and identity of a given narrative. If we look closely, numerous subtle spirit interruptions exist and different paths appear. What triggers new streams are always people who are regarded as living archives. These people always possess a broad network which cannot be confined to a single line. As an Italian art historian, historian, Robert Long once stated, in order to understand the discontinuity, it is crucial to grasp the open network, transcending historical understanding, and therefore pertaining to archives and conduct deep learning which departs from preconceptions of existing social order, difference of nation, or human preconceptions. <clears throat> During my fellowship, I researched two Ukraine-born artists, John D. Graham, Graham and David Buluk, even though Every contemporary artist or critic referred to these two artists. All the remarks center around their mysterious characters 
and their work seems to be not yet placed as if they exist outside of history. They were, in fact, living archived. David, <coughs> David Brulich was born in 1882. He wrote the famous manifest for Russian Futurist a slap in the face of public taste in 1912. He was renowned as the father of Russian Futurism. <coughs> to elude the confusion of the World War I and the Russian Revolution, he migrated to the United States via Japan with his family and relatives. Japan, at the time of his stay from 1920 to 1921, in between the First <coughs> World War and the Great Kantu earthquake, was enjoying the economic boom and the liberal atmosphere. He learned that in Japan, the most comprehensive in introduction of late Impressionism and Expressionism was in progress. Therefore, decided to stop by Japan. He planned to raise funds through exhibition and lecture in Japan before migrating to US. <clears throat> he was nearly in the 40s at the time, but still tagged as a father of Russian futurism. With the support of newspaper, Japanese newspaper companies, David Buruk gave many lectures and drew a number of young audiences. Even today, art history and in Japan refer to Buruk as the first avant-garde artist, the father of futurism, who visited and stayed in Japan. Due to the preconception, only futurism, he called avant-garde type works, were noticed and the majority of his works have been overlooked. The avant-garde movement that developed in Europe almost 10 years before might have known, <coughs> nonetheless uh, been exciting for young Japanese. However, the World War I and the Russian Revolution had significantly changed the direction of avant-garde art. That was why Buluk decided to leave Russia and go to the U.S. By 1920, when Buluk arrived to Japan, Picasso was already in the crisis season period. The same year, Giorgio Di Chirico, who gained attention throughout the war time, published a book that assembled the theme of metaphysical painting. On the surface, it seems as if avant-garde was subsiding and the current was directing toward representational painting in Germany and France as well. But the difference in appearance were considered less significant. This becomes clear when we look at the development from Dadaism, which began during the World War I, to Surrealism, whose statement was dispatched in 1923. The historical diagram which sees forms as we evolving seems invalid. The history and the establishment of a space within which the evolution of form was positioned became questioned. Rather, the focus shifted to the very process of production itself. Difference of forms and defined by particular space and history, they are positioned. However, what is included included in production process was not yet appeared as forms, resulted in no effect, much greater transforming possibilities. This is a photograph of works by Buluk I discovered by chance in the storage of Hashom Museum here. It surprised me a great deal. At the first glance, this painting didn't look like Buluk to me, since I was exposed to only futurism, futuristic or Russian constructivist type works of his. Why is there a painting of a Japanese painter from the 1920s in Washington, D.C.? This work was showing the typical style found among Japanese paintings of the 1920s, for example. Do you understand the fit find the book? In other words, the characteristic of the painting corresponds to the generation older than the young avant-garde artist who frees it 
to Brulux's lecture. They were closer to Brulux's own age. While giving lecture to young audience, Brulux actually associated with these older artists and participated in their group exhibition, Nikaten. In fact, these were the generation of painting, thoughts, critics, and authors who were the first to import movement like futurism to Japan. Among them, Liu said Kishida was the most influential. <coughs> most influential. Kishida claimed that if one logic <clears throat> radicalized the process of depiction beyond the mere reflection of exterior appearance. Those appearances inevitably become dismantled and one can attain a materialistic as well as metaphysical domain which transcend familiar forms. This notion overlaps exactly with the direction theorist and especially Ari Dali were to take Kishida or the two Hosen, this movement that took place after World War I. He saw the possibility <coughs> uh, possibility to, uh, he saw the possibility uh, to tactile states of mind which protrude reality, therefore surreal to dwell among the works of northern Renaissance painters. Alberto Dura, uh, Hans Holbein, and the realism painting from Song and Yun, Yun Dynasty. There are two arguments here. First, visual forms are mere conventions for social recognition. Second, production process is object-oriented thinking process in itself. And the method consisted in extracting the materiality and uh, plasticity that both the object and the mind as object latently possess. In order to break, break through conventional and the superficial form, David Bruck probably was aware of a group of painters who shared these similar ideas in Japan. The closest sensibility to David Bruck can be found in Harue Koga, when we related Koga to Buruk, we can see why Yasuo Kuniyoshi, who pre precedingly went to the US, uh, was able to make such a quick debut. It probably is a coincidence that all these painters like to draw cows. They might be cow bodies. David Buruk came to the US, and as it's widely recognized, his studio became a salon where artists and collectors gathered. Moreover, it is well known that red grooms and mimi groups became pop artists, <coughs> mimi groups became pop artists and the Bruluk's influence. In this way, through the presence of David Bruluk, we were able to understand for the first time how art history divided between America and Japan, and of course between Russia and Europe, actually resonated as closely related movement. However, the work of this Ukrainian artist who served as a crucial key is far from being widely recognized or understood. Why? One reason is that the great variety of his works appear to be inconsistent. When we look at his works, different styles coexist nonchalantly within the same time period. He produced these urban great variety of works within two years in Japan. Why was he so diverse split? And even if it is possible to draw the characteristic of Bruch's work as tactile, powerful, primitive, and key to expression, they are widely removed from the tag of futurism that was attached to him. However, does this truly contradict with being a futurist? In futurism merely aimed to being at the forefront of time, it can only follow the socialized order of the time and the progress of history. On the contrary, futurism must have been a movement that aimed to produce a temporal order including past 
and future in itself. Without relying on an exterior pro established order of time. Therefore, Khrushchev and other Russian futurists thought they must conquer the sun which controlled human time. Hence, it would be natural for Bruch's expression to seem anachronistic, as belonging to a confused temporal progression when viewed from the standpoint of conventional order of time, any style is possible. Since there is no time order set in advance, neither new nor old, past and the future is included in present. Therefore, past and the future also generate in the here and the now each time is occurs. Next, <clears throat> we will move on to mysterious Ukrainian artist Azaman, also from Ukraine, who was Buryuk's friend, <coughs> John Graham. He was the first painter to clearly state that the major purpose of art lies in the process of solving problem, and that a medium is a generator which produces process. As it is known, he was an autobiography mania. Depending on the biographs, he was born in 1881, 1886, or in 18th century, reincarnating ancient Roman emperor. In any case, it is well known through many remarks that he continued to give guidance to the works of artists like David Smith, Ashil Goki, De Kooning, or Jackson Paul. Not only he brought uh, an enormous amount of information extending from latest development in art in Europe, Renaissance art to African sculpture. He also excels in the ability to analyze everything with brilliant logic and insight, as it testified in his book, System and the Dialectics of Art. However, it seems that since he passed away, his works are left waiting to be revealed anew. This is a notebook, Gatorstein purchased. It gives very precise and intellectual impression, as if it belongs to a Renaissance artist. It's the next one. So, but on the other hand, this is a notebook from the archives of American art. On the contrary, it looks like a notebook of a teenager. Why are those so different? Here we also find the split. <laughs> when going through the materials, I noticed that one of the most important methods for Graham was tracing. So, just like, he traced anything, the photocopies of great ancient and modern painting, handwriting, and the flyers, works of other artists, even of his own. In fact, he didn't hesitate to trace the works of Picasso or Black, etc. It seems as if he considered tracing an original work not as an act of mimicry, but rather as a process of modification and sophistication. In fact, there is a work which seems as if he tried to improve upon the work of his friend, Stuart Davis. In the same way, the Ezra Pound was a brilliant editor and proofreader. Graham's tracing may have been an act of criticism and speculation. Therefore, it was indeed the act of painting. It was a process of abstraction. Quote from System and the Dialectics of Art, his writing, art is <coughs> essentially a process, a process of thought, a process of abstracting. What kind of process? 
a creative process of abstracting. A writer abstracts his thought and experience on a white sheet of paper. Musician abstract the same phenomena into sounds. And a painter abstract three-dimensional phenomena on a two-dimensional plane. Ho Graham, there is no end to the tracing. He traced the thought of his own already presented work. It's endlessly repeated. The book he published, System and the Dialectics of Art, was of no exception. He kept modifying and rewriting this already published work until his death. <coughs> Graham's works after 1942 are said to have followed the work of the mannerism painter Bronzino or a 19th century neoclassicist Dominic Angus. Here again, he passes and behind his method of tracing the outline, using different cards to fill out the drawing planes and overlaying the drawing. One characteristic is to draw over oil paint with pencil or pen. <coughs> the drawing is uh, articulated with basic outline, like a silk screen print. However, the lines drawn over it deviate from the original, and the colors flow out. The form is metamorphosed. The portrait Graham painted have its characteristic closed eye. <clears throat> Overall, the impression of the split feature reminds of the drawing of an architect of 18th century dating further back from Angles, Jean-Jacques Lecou. Luc considered, Luc, Luc considered both architectures and humans alike as bundles of the multiple organs ears and nodes, digestive organ, each have their own pesos, pesos and thoughts. Moreover, what the right eye thinks differ from the left eye. An architecture is a complex of these internal organs. And Ruku thought that the consciousness that is to say the subject is generated by going through the interior of his architecture. His architecture was a generator of subject. As is well known, these alchemic and occultic images appear frequently in Graham's drawing. It is said that he approached Gnosis through Jung. However, I feel that is Graham's work that gives us the opportunity to re-examine Jung's theory as a toolbox to understand the contemporary issues such as so-called big data and so on. I will leave the <coughs> detailed discussion for another time, but isn't collective unconsciousness something like an archive? <coughs> the primary characteristic of collective unconsciousness is that it's not localized in the individual and is open to the networking with the unconsciousness of others. <coughs> Individuation process, as termed by Jung, was a process of assigning a constellation-like disposition to the infinity, large and endlessly open collective of objective data, and end our movement upon it. Constellation arises from the archive of collective unconsciousness as something that replaced the subject. In this way, every time a new disposition and a new personality are produced, and these successively generated patterns and discontinuous from each other. We can hardly regard his painting as having been done by a single character. It is as if he was a medium that generated different subjects each time. He has actor work <coughs> of the artist is to become a medium, which draw out and mediate other possible subjects from the archive. What is nowadays called deep learning or machine learning is a self-referential generated process of the archive itself to extract different dispositions or constellation through the vast amount of data 
without resorting to exterior research process conducted via the necessity of a human being. The existence and the works of Graham seems to present a living precursor to this. This is a common characteristic that can be found in the works of artists, including Bruluk, who often appear in the discontinuous point in history and function like living archives. Any history presents only one arbitrary possibility among the numerous possible configurations and time order that can be drawn from archives. The configuration only relied on the identity and the consistency as the subject who selected the order. Baruch and Graham were, in fact, living archives and mediums who each time raised variously possible subjects from the archives that they themselves were. They were not subject, but mediums which generate subject. Therefore, when their function ceased to exist, they became invisible and incomprehensible. Therefore, I find it appreciate to reproduce Buick and Graham's drawing by using this machine, uh, Miss Constructor. We call her Conta. Conta's characteristic is to deal with the movement of drawing as a relative motion between the drawing board and the nib a pen point and reverse the movement of the pen into that of the board. As a result, the following points were very high. One, movement is perceived by only touching the board at a single point without moving the pen. Two, participants were able to grasp what image are drawn even if they keep their eyes closed. Three, the sense of agency is perceived without moving one's hand. Four, by experience, experiencing the production process, even different things that cannot be perceived visually can be recognized. For example, one can tell who made a given drawing. <coughs> There are no film footage recording um, of how Bruduk and Graham move the pen. Therefore, I asked a Russian conceptual artist, Vadim Zahal, my close friend, who created the work for the Russian pavilion at the, uh, 2013 Venice Biennale to trace and reproduce the drawing of Bruduk and Graham. Through Conta, therefore, the drawing is reproduced through a collaborating synergy between three subjects. Bruduk, Zaharov, and the participant of this experiment, or Graham, Zaharov, and the participant. So, uh, oops, something. Wait, no, it's um, he is a body. <coughs> So now, now uh, we are moving to the workshop from now. And the uh, subject is, I'll show you, I found this drawing. <coughs> this regarded as uh, Graham, so but uh, this drawing was found in the archive of American art, since there are other drawings by Graham, likewise drawing a single stroke, <coughs> like this. <coughs> We believe this to be able to be also done by Graham. However, it was classified in order file, meaning it's not clear who drew it. So because he, this drawing is classified as others. <coughs> what is confounding is that on top of the pencil drawing, another tracing is a pen in apparently different fund has been added. Like this, you can find. 
So it is an overlaying by another hand, or even if it was by the same Graham, it would be by another personality distant in time, uh, maybe 10 years later or something. It seems relevant to our approach to reproduce it. When the remove the pen drawn line, we notice that the two drawings of almost the same size and overlaid. Both a uh, woman's back drawn in a single stroke, it seems that he traced two different drawings separately. So maybe original, he has a kind original, and he traced the uh, original and make two different drawings. <coughs> Uh, the relation between their position is accidental. The superimposition is arbitrary. So it is an overlaying by another hand, or even it was by the same Graham, it would be by another personality distant in time. It is, seems relevant to our approach to reproduce it. This is a, our today's subject. <laughs> and I'd like to introduce uh, the Katsuyoshi Tsujita, and he's a collaborator of my uh, system architect. He made this. So, yeah, please. The first one that uh, we'd like to do a workshop, the first I'd like to show the trial and. Uh, yeah. So yes, um, I'd like to show the demonstration of the robots. So please gather around here. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> Great. So this is uh, Miss Conta. So uh, usually the robot drawing robot uh, moves the pen and uh, emulate the drawing of a human. But the, this system is different, quite different from that uh, drawing robot. So what is different? So this, uh, the feature of the system is uh, when we put the pen on the table, just keep the pen. So the robot moves the table on the opposite side, opposite direction. So uh, the uh, drawings appears on the table. So what is the drawing data? Uh, the drawing data? So the, this system utilizes the recorded drawing data. So when first uh, uh, you draw the uh, a figure on the tablet, the computer recorded the trajectory of the or velocity pattern of the drawing. And utilizing these, these data, the robot moves the ta table, a traveling plate. So you just put on the pen on the table the figure emerges on the table. So that is the, one of the uh, feature of this system. Uh, so first I'll show you the uh, motion of the system. Okay. First, uh, a very uh, simultaneous motion. Okay. Oh, okay. So first, uh, the, I draw the, the drawing on this tablet. The robot simultaneously moves on the tablet. Okay. First, maybe, you know. You can put the pen on this plate. Okay. Yeah, yeah please. Okay. Okay, so this is a simultaneous. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, this is a simultaneous motion. So the the trajectory of, of the drawing is recorded on this computer. So we can replay the data. So uh, anytime. So keep as an archive. This is an archive. Yes. 
the first one is uh, the feature. Uh, the first feature of the system is that. So the next feature of the system is uh, to realize the subjectivity of the uh, human to, when we draw a picture on the system. To yeah? find uh, First? to feel se experience of others. Okay. First, uh, sorry. Yeah, next I will show the next data. So, very simple one. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. So, please keep away for your safety. So, please fast as um, Yes. You wait a second, sir. The faster oh, that they are <laughs> going up. Yes. <laughs> going up. So she didn't, she did not know what is what the, the figure um, emerges on the table. The figure is like this, you know. You know? Yes, she, she, she can figure out the image of this figure, you know. But in the, by utilizing this system, so the tactile sensation of the pinpoint uh, touch contact of the pen, she can identify what the figure is by the. Just only one point, just, tactile. Just a tactile sensation, yeah. Okay, please. Okay, are you ready? Yes, start. Okay, you can figure out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so next, yeah. okay. close eyes. Yeah. Please, close, close, eye. please close, eyes. And I close my eyes. Yes. One. Uh, please keep away. So. <laughs> Very simple one. Okay. Ready to put it in? Yes. Ready? Go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just hanged <laughs> the same system. Okay. In this case, please uh, do not use the pen. Just please you just just like this. You can find out uh, what is this. So, okay. Or please close your eyes. Okay, so, I can okay. close my eyes. Okay. okay. And do this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will start. Close your eyes. Okay. Yes. 
didn't go down yet. Yeah. Yeah. He finished, yes. Can you figure out the <laughs> shape of this drawing? What? <laughs> can you figure can you figure out can you understand if <laughs> they're real? start.
put the another one in the next point. Maybe, maybe we'll put this one. Yes. Okay. Three, go. Every people has a tendency to do the several ways. Mm -hmm. So the one of the examples are the uh, uh, this one. This is the This is the way to make this is the way to make one like one month later. <laughs> she made <laughs> this almost set. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, other person also the, this this oh, okay. this person original. It's a totally different from the original drawing. So, but uh, his he made always the same oh, distortion. Okay. So yeah. it's a kind of the tendency of the, his own style. So it's overlap. <laughs> okay. He had no subjectivity, and he can do so very precise.
Yeah. Am I supposed to understand what you were feeling? Yeah. That's the idea. So I tried to take nothing. That's very hard. But unfortunately, I I I couldn't figure out the meaning. Something like that. So we, according to the image, we move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you consciously create an image, yeah, yeah, yeah. then I try to, then I hold a pen and I reproduce your your emotions. Yeah, yeah. That's the idea. Maybe the collaboration. I'm going to just collaboration. So maybe this. So that reason, this system is a medium. Please, we can conclude it. Thank you. So the, I, I the, the, already the, I passed the, my article. So anyway, the, <coughs> based on the, this uh, four um, point, based on the find, finding stage above, there is a possibility for further investigation. Uh, why the sensation internally experienced in production process which transcended the difference between direct sensory information such as vision, audio, uh, or touch can be grasped and recorded. Six, it reveals a new possibility for the mutual transformation of the sense wherein visual information becomes converted into tactile information tactile into visual or auditory into visual, using the internal grasp as a common sense, which is to say a medium. <coughs> Seven, by extra tracing the difference inherited within the production process that are not perceived as outward appearance, it becomes possible to extract patterns of thought or behavior, which has been understood only in time of personal character as objective data. This leads to the possibility of transmitting and transferring these individual character characteristics to others. For example, similar pattern may be found between the process of depicting uh, subject matter, which triggers psychological resistance and that of the avoiding physical obstacles. Similarly, common future can be found among the planning to literally proceed to the <laughs> procedure of action and the composition of an argument. In other words, the pattern within temporal development may be extracted. As I have stated in the beginning, this is to say that misconta will make it possible to assemble archives of handwriting and drawing, the record of movement made in 
production process of all painters, poets, musicians, and dancers, and enable their reproduction at any given moment. And we find the, ourselves already in the constructing process of the device which create an archive of how to get the now. Thus, it becomes possible to explore deeper levels of information and that doesn't appear on the surface, which had been impossible to render into a search engine until now. The connection between one information and another becomes itself a meta-information, enabling the understanding of what was embodied in the information. It becomes possible to perceive movement information from visual information or visual information from auditory information. Moreover, this robot, with contact, also sees currently mere prototype, enables the grasp of the other's internal grasp, thereby making it possible to learn what has been understood until now as individual characteristics. Therefore, we can say it is possible to become the other. Ultimately, it reveals to us the plasticity of the subject itself. What is important is not the modern plasticity of an object, but to regain the plasticity of the subject as a living worker by creating the possibility of interactive contact with the archive where all history remains plastic. Thank you.